rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening to the 20 October 2014 Town of Hampton Selectmen's Meeting. Roman 1 public comment period. Those was wishing public comment. Please approach the podium. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I wanted to talk briefly about um, on the consent agenda, no parking on Badcock Ave. And <clears throat> this is a problem that's been going on for a long time with parking down the beach. And, um, and also, you know, I see Diane is in here for her <coughs> monthly appointment. <coughs> As we know, as we all know, the beach is, you know, is, we're on the right side of the hill. Things, things are going good down there. You know, they're, they're only going to get better. This Thursday, I'm going to be going to the Hampton Beach Area Commission meeting, and basically, I'm going to be talking about parking. And when I say that, I only get involved in public parking, town parking, state parking, and precinct parking. Private, I, I stay out of that because I think that's, you know, private's private. Um, I understand both sides of the problem. This bad clock, yeah, if anybody's familiar with the 94 feet they're trying to close down. Those are employees parking in the main beach, and, you know, and people say it's trash and everything, and, and it's probably as much noise as anything. You know, when people get out of work at 2 in the morning, they start their cars. If they don't realize they're loud, people have their windows open. That's, you know, that, that, that's an issue. Um, but we need to be proactive and try to do some things. And I'll be going to the HBAC, but I just kind of wanted to throw this out there for you. But uh, we have problems all over town regards to parking, whether it's, you know, storage, junk cars, boats, plowing, whatever. But let's try to think outside the box with some innovative ideas. In the town wanted Ashworth to have, I came in a few years ago to speak about this, but I'm persistent. It took 20 years to get bathrooms in Hampton Beach, so we, we just, we work hard. You have some what I'll call, for lack of a better word, dead corners. You have about a thousand square feet of dead corners in that town lot at Ashworth Avenue. When I say that, the corner of Brown and Ashworth, you got about a 20 by 20 area. You might have 350 square feet, 400 square feet there. You have a few other corners. You have them in the back. They total to be about a thousand. If you take those spots and you got to give people, you got to try to help the businesses and and do this without the taxpayers spending any money, really, because this can be done for little or no cost. One, could, one corner could be for bicycles, another corner could be for mopeds, scooters, and another one could be a bus stop or a computer, computer drop-off. People realize now with the precinct lot, the best way to get to Hampton Beach is actually go down Brown and yeah. get dropped off. The hub of the beach is actually behind the casino right in front of the police station. So those are a few ideas there that could be done with little or no cost, and you might get the businesses to chip in for some of that because it's helping get their employees there. I'm thinking that we should need some incentive. They have some programs with the school with kids working, but the biggest Hampton, biggest, Hampton Beach's biggest asset is jobs. What they provide down there, you know, you get kids all the way through high school, you know, right through college. And I took a little ride around there today. We have that new parking lot, or I don't know what you want to call it, but if it's a town lot where the sewer pump station is, if anybody's driven through, there's, there's probably spaces for about 100 cars in there. Along the fences, on the, let's say on the east and west side, I think I counted about 25. In the middle, if there was something done, you probably have 100. But I mentioned this at the meeting last month at the HBAC. Working with the school, I'd like to see some spaces down there where you gave some incentive to the kids and you dedicated some spots with a sign and say, that's your spot and have one that's for National Honor Society students, one that's for the ROTC students, one that's for the, you know, the kid that's good in athletics, one's good for a band member, one's good for a perfect attendance. And if you have, and let's say you are eligible by, you know, maintaining, you know, a good, good standing in school, and you have proof of your employment at the beach, and to make it all fair, let's say we were all eligible for the same spot, where well, you throw the name in a hat, you pull it out, the kids know it's fair. 
And the kids are pretty innovative. You know, they'll carpool themselves. They'll, te they'll teach us a lot of things. Sometimes, you know, when the, you got the, the kids, if you, if you work together, because like in this Badcock Ave spot that people are talking about, if you just said to the kids, you know, be quiet when you come, because they don't realize, they can't understand why we go to bed at night. We can't understand why they're up all night. You know, it's, it's, it's about educating each other, and um, I think we can make this work, you know. I, I, had, a, I had a nice gentleman this, this summer. His dad asked me if he could park in my yard at Glade Path, and I said, absolutely. And he, he probably parked there four or five times, and I said, just be quiet going in and out. So that's an issue wherever you are, is the noise. And that the lot at the pump station is kind of away from places. The chief's familiar, familiar with uh, the, corner, the corner spots down by him. And it's, it's a great spot because it's, it's away from the residential area. So you've got to try to keep that in consideration. But you know, let's, be in, let's be innovative. Let's be proactive. Let's have other people throw, kick their ideas in there and um, sit down. Diana's been great giving me some numbers working together to go into the meeting Thursday. And um, I just wanted to put that out there and let everybody think about it. Thank you very, Thank much. You very much. Appreciate it, sir. Further public comment? Howdy. Jay Diener from the Conservation Commission. Um, there's another item on the consent agenda tonight, um, which is requesting for posting signs at um, White's Lane and John T's Lane, and uh, just want to advocate for that. Uh, Pete Tilton on the Conservation Commission has been heading up our effort to try to turn the 12 shares area of town into a town forest. And as part of that, he's asking to post some signage up there. And, and this really doesn't have to do with the effort of, of making a town forest. It's just smart business, if you will. It's a public safety issue. Um, the signage is simply to remind hunters that they shouldn't be discharging their firearms within 300 feet of an occupied dwelling, and to remind hikers that they shouldn't go into that area during hunting season wearing grays and whites and browns. Um, so simple signage, we want it to be temporary only during the hunting season going on the gates at Jaunty's Lane and at White's Lane, and then not necessary for the rest of the season. So um, I hope you'll support that effort. <coughs> Thanks. Further public comment? Seeing none, Roman 2, announcements and community calendars. Like the music. Yes. I want to send a very large round of applause to the residents, business owners, around 836 Lafayette Road. They showed up en masse at the planning board meeting. They did a great job. They were well organized. They had counsel with them to protect their property rights <coughs> and uh, the, uh, the, uh, their uh, just quality of life as residences. I am so excited to see the public getting out. Once a, a development is built, you can't ever go back. But I am absolutely delighted to see neighborhoods getting out and expressing their feelings on proposed to developments in their area. So I am just as proud as I can be of the residents who showed up at that meeting and who advocated for their quality of life. Great job. Thank you, ma'am. So what, what are you talking, what, what are you referring to? I'm just curious. The eighth, oh, wait a minute, zoning, I'm sorry, zoning board, zoning uh -huh. board. Thank you, Rick, for, <clears throat> it was the zoning board meeting and a, a request for a variance because of a very <coughs> narrow uh, so easement. Which, when, when is it? It was the most recent zoning board meeting last week. Great, great job to see the public turn out. Okay, thank you. No, I don't have anything. Thank thanks. you, sir. Yes, the uh, <coughs> Friends of the Gristmill Pond are holding a public information session on Wednesday, or, or excuse me, on Thursday, October 23rd, from 6.30 to 8 p.m. at the Lane Memorial Library, the Wheaton Lane Room. And uh, they want to, uh, they, need, they would like for the public's input. Um, it says, why should you care? The complex is one of Hampton's oldest historic landmarks. Removing the old dam would risk water overtopping High Street, and the removal of the dam would significantly change the ecosystem and possibly affect the Aquifer Protection District. It says, be part of the solution. Please come and exchange ideas. So that's a... A public information center and reference and uh, meeting on the Grist Mill Pond Dam. 
on Thursday, October 23rd, 6 30 <coughs> to 8 at the library. Thank you, sir. I'm set. Okay, and did you want to talk about the auction at all? No, the town had a good auction this weekend. Uh, <laughs> there was a lot of stuff that the town got some <laughs> money for and uh, cleaned up some area down to public work. So. Wonderful. Thank you for everybody that participated in that. Uh, Roman 3, <coughs> consent agenda, a motion, please. I'll so move. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Woolsey Griffin. Thank you. Roman 4, appointments. One, Diana Martin, Director of Parks and Recreation, Departmental Update. Director. Good evening. I, um, I just have a few things for our youth that we've been doing and things that we have been working on that are going to be upcoming. But for the parks maintenance, our parks employees have been excellent again this year. They've been hard, hard working, keeping up lining the fields for soccer, softball, and flag football, which are all almost done for the season, about four weeks left. All playgrounds have been examined each week, and the five bars raked out evenly every couple of days. We'll be painting the new garage in the next few weeks. We actually started painting it already, but we're moving on, hoping to finish it before it gets too cold. True Green Chemlon has completed their maintenance program for the town for this season. We've been picking up trash around all the parks. We've placed signs out at all the parks. Um, We've been working on that bid for the lights, preparing for their arrival at Eaton Park. Yay! <laughs> We're hoping that those light, the, the actual lights will be in this week, at the very latest. Um, I know we got some rain coming up, so we might have some issues. Public Works is actually helping us with the project. They have to, um, I don't know if you want to say dig out or mow out around some of the park areas so that the company can get in to set a couple of the lights. Um, they're helping us with that. And Urban Tree met with us last week, and we're hoping that um, they're going to have to cut down a couple branches on two trees so that the lights will actually shine onto the field. So we have those two things to go with the lighting. So hopefully the whole project will be done in the next few weeks. Uh, the parks crew has completed getting the fields ready for the flag football season that is underway and setting up all the boxes and all that stuff. The parks crew helped set up for the art walk a few weeks ago, um, and they're also going to be doing all the setup for our Halloween events shortly. Uh, they set up the signs at Tuckfield and Eaton Park, and they've been up for about a month and a half, maybe a little bit longer. So if you haven't seen them, drive down Park Avenue. They look really fantastic. We have a new brand, so it looks great. Uh, the parks crew has sealed all of the memorial benches that are put up around the town, and I've also just ordered another bench for a resident that the parks crew will be setting up as soon as that park comes in. That should be in in the next few days. Um, the parks crew did all the setup for the third annual I'm Trying 5K Row Race, and they've been doing cleanup constantly every week around the Tuck Building to help with the setup for the summer activities and moved stuff from one location to the other, now back for the fall activities. The parking lots have been great this year. Victor DeMarco and Kendall Ells did a great job heading that, that crew this year. They've been excellent. Vic, as you know, was ill at the beginning of the season, so Kendall took over his duties. She did a fantastic job. So far in the lots, we've made $513,901, and there's still six concerts to go. Um, we got a great system in place. I don't know if anyone heard of, heard um, about any trash in the parking lots because we've been doing great at that. I think the last few years we got a great system going and the trash has been m minimal. Uh, for recreation programs, we've scheduled the fields for use for the men's softball league, flag football leagues, little warriors, HYA soccer seasons. All those are underway now. We had one of our best camp seasons ever. We had a great staff at Tuck Field, and all the camp weeks were full. Participants had a great summer. Co-Rec Softball League and Men's Softball League for summer are both finished, and we just had our Co-Rec Softball Banquet, which was fun. We had it at the <coughs> Galley Hatch Pelican Club. The K-2 Sports Program begun for the fall uh, for soccer is almost done, and we have scheduled basketball, pillow polo, indoor games, and outdoor games to go throughout the year. Our annual June Senior Luncheon with the Senior Citizen Club was great this year. We broke for summer and we're getting prepared for their December luncheon now. Out with this, Mrs. A has begun for the first season, first session of this year. 
We are also offering a turkey luncheon in partnership with the St. James Lodge for the seniors on December 4th at the lodge, and tickets are free. They just need to be picked up at our office. Uh, Toys in the Attic Theater Camp is complete, and their show is on the 16th of October at the Old Salt. Renee is working on getting a new instructor for programming some of our fitness classes, starting with Zumba. We have done all the planning. We are taking registration for a New York City day trip, Portland Symphony Orchestra free tr Freeport shopping trip, and Merrimack shopping trip. We had a fall foliage trip on the 9th of October. It was sold out, and everyone had a great time. We have set up a trip to the Curia Museum with the Puritan back room for lunch. Pickleball program starts tonight in the upper gym of the junior high school. Men's basketball has begun for the season also. We have set up the program to see Frozen in Boston in February and it's already sold out. We had a travel show for Costa Rica on the 7th. And while we were there, we also showed the travel show for Ireland, which will be next year as well. But we will be showing that travel show again. Apple Fest is this week at the Trinity Episcopal Church at Hobbs House, and I probably want to talk to you sometime this week about it <laughs> or Friday. Um, and we do still have tickets for that. It's free for the seniors from 1 to 3. We have also done all the planning of our Halloween programs. On October 31st, we'll have our Halloween festival at Tuckfield for kids ages one, grades 1 through 5 from 3 o'clock to 5 p.m. And this year, we're also including a pet costume contest as part of our festival. So we're hoping that we, that will encourage pet owners to come and sign up at our office for that part of the festival. And then trick-or-treating, again, is going to be October 31st this year from 5.30 to 8. <laughs> um, we have also implemented the below programs and they went really well this summer these included the strawberry festival that we run with the Hampton Fire <coughs> Surf Lessons, Archery, Challenger Soccer Camp, Hershey Track and Field Lego Robotics, Watercolors the Theater Camp, Camp A Lot of Fun Harlem Wizards, Donnie Seals Basketball Camp, Warrior Basketball Camp, Flag Football Camp and Tennis Lessons we have, outgoing, we have ongoing programs running right now that we're taking registration for. These include bingo, bone builders, bridge, Hampton walkers, and yoga classes. We have set up all and are taking registration for the Hampton Rec Ski and Ride program that will be at Cranmore Mountain this year. The high school logo, Loco Hoops League will be starting up in December. We also have set up a number of trips to the Oxford Casino in Maine and we are currently taking registration for them and those are really hot we've been selling out of those so got to come in early if you want to go to Oxford Casino we put together holiday season activities the tour light will be held on December 16th and 17th and, and we'll be doing the judging on the holiday lights contest on the 18th we also be hosting our annual tree lighting ceremony on December 5th starting at 630 with the lighting of the tree and 7 with a lot of local vendors and, of course, the horse-drawn rides and the cartoon characters and Santa Claus. Our flag football season has started for all three age groups. We have some great coaches this year, and the season is going well. We have more teams than we have ever had this year with 30 teams over the three leagues. So we have approximately 300 kids playing flag football, which is great. That's, that's really grown, and it's a lot of fun. The Super Bowl weekend will be held on November 15th and 16th at Tuckfield. We are offering a bus trip to Boston for the theater production of Motown, a smash musical, on January 31st at the Boston Opera House. Tickets for that are on sale in our office right now and would make great Christmas presents. We are also offering a trip to the Magic of Christmas on Saturday, December 13th at the Portland Symphony Merrill Auditorium. In um, a late entry, we also just set up a trip to the Celtic Thunder and that trip's going to be in April. Mm. For lifeguards, the season is over for this year. I did have six lifeguards. These lifeguards rotated, so there would be five working each weekend. Next year, I'm hoping to get six guards again, as this worked out really well, because I was able to let them have a day off here or there, so I would still have full coverage and not be short-staffed. And all the lifeguard <coughs> equipment's been put away and inventoried and everything. Giants at the signs have been changed. In regards to grants and de donations, the decal program that the town clerk's office is running for scholarship money for camps and programs for children worked out great again this year. Many children were able to go to camp this summer that normally would not have been able to attend. 
So I always like to thank the residents that helped us out by okay. buying those stickers because it really does make a, a difference in these people's lives. We also received over the past few months a number of donations from local sports toward our skateboard park, and we also received a donation from the Rotary for the same item. We received three Easter basket prizes that were donated for the Easter egg dig from Playland Arcade. <laughs> And we have many donations toward the road race to offset costs to put the race together, including Hannaford, Shaw's, Seacoast Coke, Knowles Tree Service, Commonwealth Glass and Mara, L Seafood, Ben's Auto Body, JSC Special Commodities, Fly Navy, Casey Durgan Photography, The Shark 102.1, Kay's Cafe at the Galley Hatch, The Community Oven, Red Shoe Barn, Locos Cocos, 401 <laughs> Tavern, Framingham Elks, and the Winnicott High School. That is all. Thank you, Director Slocum Wilson. The park at Five Corners. Yes. Which has been neglected for a long time. We've got three it's or four dead old. trees. Yeah. Can we maybe put that on the radar for the coming year? I or actually two? have some quotes for some those trees on my desk. Need to get rid of the dead trees and need to spruce up the park a little bit. That's a, a great little park. Mm -hmm. The um, park at the very, well, actually the, the little wedge of land at the end where Locker Road meets Winnicunnet kind of looks beautiful because uh, it's an ben, adopted spot. Yeah, Ben Moore and his wife work on that every year. Mm -hmm. But the uh, Five Corners Park is a really old park and it's a beautiful little park, or should be. And it's been very neglected. Yeah, I'd like, I actually tried to get some uh, information on the grass there because something's going on with the grass that is not, we don't think is grubs. Mm. I, so I agree with you that that park does need some help. Because it's a nice place for youngsters mm -hmm. and I would like to see it maybe just beginning to come onto the radar. Yep. Thank you, Diana. Yep. And three cheers for light. <laughs> well, I do, like I said, I do have quotes for those trees, too, and it would be not. I just got to make sure I have the just money to pay for them to come out. In. Yeah. So and the lights, yeah. I'm glad to hear that you have so many um, events going on and how successful they seem to be. Yeah, I we're think doing great. You're Thank doing you. a great job. Thank, Thank you. you. And as always, they're not all for children. We have a lot for Do a lot for some seniors. Of our seniors, some are regular adults, some that aren't <laughs> quite so senior yet. But we do have a lot for the seniors. I know, as she said, Apple Fest is coming up this Friday. Uh, a lot of those trips, a lot of them, are, uh, the, the seniors really appreciate. So, well, part of our mission statement, we actually try to live by, and we try to offer at least something for everybody in the mm -hmm. community, or something for everyone. You know what I mean? I, so I, I, I think we you try. Do a good job at, at trying to Thanks. make sure there is something for everybody. Yeah. And I will talk to you later on about how can okay. we call tomorrow morning. Sure. Uh, excellent. I'm always amazed at how well <laughs> yeah. Hanson Red Department does. I mean, you know, it's just do a great job. And I've heard a rumor that Rusty's a good uh, Zuma, Zuma uh, instructor. instructor. Yes. Yeah, so awesome. We'll talk about that tomorrow too, Rusty. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Lifeguard too. <laughs> yeah. All right. Director, outstanding work. Thank you very Thanks. much. Thanks. Good evening. Okay. Funny guy. <laughs> <laughs> Roman 4, number 2, Chris Jacobs, Deputy Director, Department of Public Works, Alpha High Street, Lafayette Road, Drainage Project. Sir. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. I put together a um, package for the uh, board, I believe, on Thursday and delivered up to town. I trust everyone's got that or has received it. It's a compilation of... Uh, how we got where we're at because when I talked it over with a uh, town manager uh, we came to realize that four of you um, this was a, a project that maybe would catch you from out of the blue where did it come from <laughs> why are we even here why did we even do it um, it started out as uh, basically a summer thunderstorm back in I believe 2011 uh, flooded out a number of the businesses uh, Cohen's jewelry on the corner uh, all those buildings suffered. What happened is uh, that whole intersection drains towards their uh, businesses. Um, the current drainage system is undersized for the, the, in other words, the pipe capacity is undersized for the amount of water that can come at it during a, a heavy uh, summer thunderstorm. So um, the board uh, 
through, I guess, planning and the public works director at the time uh, came up with an estimate and they applied for uh, approximately $200,000 in funding, 149 coming from the feds and the roughly 49 and change made up from, from us. Um, the, uh, I gave you the grant agreement which was signed back uh, 42312. Uh, Selectman Griffin was the only one on the board at that time who uh, is currently sitting. He was the, uh, he signed as chairman. So I gave you a copy of that. Um, the breakdown is under ex Exhibit B where their percentages are. Um, what we found is with this project and, and a few others um, that you've seen before you, when they put together the project scope, they put together the meat and potatoes, forgot about cooking it, <laughs> forgot about seasoning it, forgot about complying with the town's uh, uh, ordinances with respect to putting together a bid package, bidding it, all those things. Because all those things do take time and they take money. And I think the thought was, and not to disparage the, uh, our predecessors, was they thought that a lot of that work could be done in-house. Um, it can't because of, A, the size of the pipe that we need to replace, uh, B, the size of a piece of equipment it would need. We, just, we have a payloader for moving snow. We have a backhoe for replacing, let's say, up to 24-inch pipe. Some of this is going to have to be 30 and 36-inch pipe goes all the way down through Depot Square. <clears throat> That's the other thing is I did attach to the back yeah. scope of the plan. Um, project was bid out. Uh, it came in well in excess of the, um, the number, the monies that we had allotted. Basically, the low bid was 398 975 and then 477 575 Reasons for that? are um, we anticipate that they were concerned with the traffic would have to be maintained at all times to the intersections. Uh, that's problematic. It cuts down on their uh, work productivity. Secondly, the size of this project may seem big to us, um, but it was actually small to the, to the, to the size of the, yeah. to the contractors that have this kind of equipment to complete this kind of job, it was actually a small job. If this had been part of a, let's say, a million dollar road improvement <coughs> project that had just gotten swallowed up in it, wouldn't have been, would, have, would not have been an issue. Because you can see we didn't attract an oddly, we didn't attract uh, uh, SUR construction out of Rochester, they have a keen operation. We didn't get any contractors of that caliber. What we got was uh, contractors that said, yeah, this would be a great job. I can wedge it between this project and this project. Mm -hmm. But the, to the bigger boys who could have gotten this done quicker, and, and when I say quicker, less expensively, mm -hmm. because they would have had bigger <coughs> equipment, more people, they'd have come and bang the job out in less than 30 days. Uh, so, but we didn't attract any of those people. So um, Keith put together, uh, and the other thing is, uh, last but not least, is the money does expire March 8th of 2015. I have, in a letter to Elizabeth Peck, requested that we be extended a year. She's come back, give me some more information. Tell me the who, what, when, where's, and why's. Okay, that's a fair request. Uh, I wanted to get through tonight before I responded back to her. Um, the tough part about doing a FEMA grant is all the pipe that you see on the on the the project, and there's a, a line that's drawn on the right side of the sheet. It says base and additional high street. We only did out the base work, which is everything to the left. When you commit to doing a project, if you told them you're going to put in a 1,075 feet of pipe, they expect 1,075 feet of pipe. They don't expect you to shorten the project to match the money. Mm. They when you when the part of the loan commitment was. If it runs over, you get it all done at your cost. So it's either a all go or no go as far as they're concerned. So that's where we're left at. We, we have a number of options. Uh, Keith put them together in his July 11th memo, and they were, so I believe, yeah, we could rebid the work right now. 
Uh, maybe we get a contractor that uh, missed a few jobs and says, "Great, I'm gonna I'm gonna go for that job at 275 and and get her done." Um, that is possible. I couldn't guarantee that. Uh, one of the other pro uh, options is to possibly rebid this attached to Exeter Road project. It would probably, as I say, be a, a blip. It would only be 250,000 of a multi-million dollar project. Uh, third option is would be just to table the project until it's such time as we get uh, ready to replace the sewer lines. Um, I don't know if anyone's aware, but the sewer lines coming down Lafayette into this intersection are PVC, uh, done back when the state improved most of that project. But from there south, we're talking vitrified uh, clay pipes that are 1935, 1945, and in the 70s. Um, and south all the way to the Lafayette Winnicott Road intersection is where our, some of our defects are showing up. So. Uh, I know Mr. Spainhauer, Toby, said, geez, why can't we do this project as part of a sewer and drainage? Because that would make more sense. And he's right. It w if money were not an object, it would be make sense to go in there, do the sewer replacement, and do the drainage replacement all at the same time. But <laughs> that's beyond our budget's means. I have to refer back to you folks. What would you like us to do? Second Wilson. The project has to be done. That is the most heavily traveled intersection, like Exeter Road, uh, and you have all the water flowing down because High Street is at the bottom of the hilly area coming down Route 1, all the way down, uh, draining down Dearborn Avenue. People have, property owners have helped a little bit in the back, shoring up that embankment behind the hardware store and so forth. But that road is going to pot fast. Um, I'm through there every morning and growl every time I go through the potholes and the drain that's all falling, sinking down, whatever. We have got to do that. Um, and I agree, I would love to see it as part of the major sewer project as well. But I think what you've outlined here is a good first step and you have got to get going and do it. Now, you have a, a big challenge here, even more so than the Exeter Road, because of the confined space. And that's going to be a huge... Are we going to be able to make space in the town parking lot for equipment that's needed? Because you've got nowhere else to go. Yeah, that, that was not a problem for them. But that would um, be... Okay. In other words, like, for instance, when they're laying pipe, um, they <clears> bed <throat> it in stone, they'd use what we call a stone bucket, mm. which looks like a rather large wash tub that they drag down the street and they would just go around the corner grab a load with the payloader and refill it okay but that is probably one of the it's that type of methodology that leads to the increased cost now with the volume of traffic through there all the time you, you're going to do this off season I'm assuming but you're going to have to have a workaround right you have to divert traffic somewhere or another so that you can really close off the road and get it done especially the high street section Right. I mean, that was one of the things that Keith outlined, I believe, in option one, is that come up with a traffic management plan that probably gave, you know, working with the, with the police department, mm -hmm. which would give reasonable access through the intersection, but at the same time would give a big, bigger working area mm. to them. I'm thinking, if, for instance, if they had the middle lane, which is really where this, the storm drainage goes, mm -hmm. in that, let's say, they either had the right or the left lane, to work in, it would probably go quicker, smoother, less expensively. Could you shut the whole thing down, divert down Toll Avenue, and, and divert? Well, I mean, not. you're going to have to. Probably you not know? with the size of the trucks that need to make that corner. <coughs> that would be a real challenge. I just thought yeah. that that would be a, a non-option, okay. given, the, given the amount of traffic. Because that's a terrible there. space to work in. Well, it really the, is. the other thing is the businesses have to stay open. I mean, they have yeah. to, there has to be some uh, flexibility. To if I could just kind of... Uh, keep this structured uh, but anyway I, I as far as I'm concerned you've got to do it the sooner the better and do whatever it takes to to get it together yeah um, you know you mentioned about the other board this you're presenting it differently than it was presented to the other board and I wish Fred was here this <coughs> evening because he would have a lot to offer and uh, have answers for what you said because uh, I 
I think that I can't really remember exactly, but I do remember there being some talk about it being done with ex with uh, High Street. And I just can't quite remember exactly what, but I'm sure that Fred had a lot of other information to share here of why these decisions were made when they were made. True. Thank you. Silicon Bridal. I think it's an area that needs definitely needs work. Mm -hmm. Do we go out and rebid again? That's a possibility. I mean, so we need we need to get some prices on it. And like you said, there may there may be somebody else that now is that's out there that would would want to rebid on it. I don't know. Um, I, I'm I'm not opposed also to the idea of tying it in with Exeter. We're working in that whole strip at the same time. It it, it uh, um, I mean. But I think maybe we go look for a, for a new, uh, to put it out to rebid, see if there is a price out there, because we've got to do something with it. Mm -hmm. um, looking at this, the, the drainage goes through Depot Square. Mm -hmm. Is that on a, on a, on a right-of-way? Yes. Mm -hmm. The town presently yeah, has. Yeah. So, um, drains in the back of the railroad track. Yeah, I, I know where it goes. Yeah. I, I just... <clears throat> we've, we've had issues with that person with that easement before, and I want to make sure we address that at some point, too. Yeah. So, but I think uh, my, my point of view is that we need to see if we can get another price on it. If I may, uh, just with that thought, we would have to provide some additional funding that we don't have right now because the contractors, we had a hard time to you get two contractors okay. attracted mm -hmm. in the project. If they feel that, if contractors know, and they'll ask the question, we had the pre-bid for this. We only had five contractors show up and only two places to bid. Mm -hmm. But they're going to ask before they spend their time and man hours to come up with a price and to do all the work that's necessary mm -hmm. to do that. They want to make <coughs> sure that funding's assured. So we wouldn't be able, it wouldn't make any sense to rebid it until we have funding. And, and right now we don't have the funding. That's where I had mentioned that we'd have to have a warrant article or put it in the operating budget, one of the two. Mm. So maybe maybe we put it in the maybe we come up with a warrant article then between now and then for 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 the balance of this. It's too bad that we lose the hundred and forty nine forty nine thousand that that uh, that we've gotten a grant. If if you know if we can come up with some money in a warrant article to do it and get it done, then maybe that's what we need to do. Yeah, I mean, you guys are the experts, so, you know, depend upon a lot about what you say, but now, if we get the year's extension, would, do you think we'll get that? If you want us to rebid it so that we got numbers, in other words, continue to work on it, either rebid it or you're intending on putting a Warner article together, our probability of getting the, the one-year extension is, is good. If you said no additional funding, no warrant article, then they'll probably look at our actions as a town and say somebody else could use the money. They'll take it away. All right. So, so I mean, so we don't want to lose that money. I mean, right? I mean, want to? It's going to be. The only thing I would say is I think that if it was done as part of a larger size project, such as and I'm not advocating to include it in the Exeter Road project. I just wanted to throw that out as an option. But if we wanted to include it in a much larger size, you'd probably realize that in savings anyway. The 170, you'd see a reduction in, it'd probably be a washer, or you may even do a little bit better uh, than getting that funding. There's no guarantees, but that, that would be my thought. I, I, I'm, I'm concerned that just rebidding again after talking to the two mm -hmm. contractors isn't going to yield a dramatic change. A lot of times we'll rebid something and somebody else pops out of the, you know, the woodwork or because it's a different time of year or something, they're going to do it. But, but it, it really wasn't the time of year. It, it was more, this is going to be a problem, <laughs> you yeah. know, mm -hmm. from a logistical and, and uh, just productivity standpoint. So, so what we're saying if we don't rebid it, then we have to come up with <coughs> money ourselves. Right. There's no other grants and stuff we can go mm -hmm. for. Yeah. Right. Oh, you, you could always reapply for it, but I mean, it took oh, I don't know two years, three years to get to even get this money. So, you know, the lead time is huge. Okay. 
and if it were put off for a few years? Huh. If it were put up for, for off for a few years, the, the, the only perceptible risk that I can see is possible flooding of those businesses again. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not going to lose the road bed. I'm not going to – it isn't causing traffic accidents every day, but it is – it was at the urging of those residents and, and those business owners that it was initially undertaken, I believe. Okay, thank you. Lisa. Uh, good evening, gentlemen. Thank you for your information. I see that CMA is uh, uh, conducting this uh, uh, process. How much have they been paid for the work product on this to get us where we're at today? I believe it's around uh, thirty-five or $40,000. Specifically for this? Yes. And they received $45,000 for the work? Yes. I got that and, and not exactly. I can't tell you off the top of my head. So I, I, they're making good money. and. Uh, I'm not, I'm not seeing really great results, and I just want to go through this and have some real concerns about it. And I've already sent you an email earlier this evening during this, this meeting. Uh, the contract was signed two and a half years ago. Uh, it was signed by the New Hampshire Department of Safety, Homeland Security and Emergency Management. It was signed by the chairman of the board. The completion date was to be 2015. Um, there's $150,000 of free money. Um, so Lieutenant Nichols was the chairman at that time, just for the record. We're assuming this moves forward. There is uh, a legal contract. There's numerics, uh, 4.2, 7.1, 7.2, 9.1, 11, 11.1. Eleven one one, twelve two one, twelve and twenty. Talks about our options, our obligations. Talks about data. I've sent you that email. If you can get that information back, talks about money spent. Talks about telephones, records, emails. What we have been doing for two and a half years mm -hmm. uh, to move this project along uh, and secure one hundred forty-nine thousand one hundred and fifty-six dollars of money to the town of Hampton. Um, there is a Lance Harbor, the hazard mitigation officer. Um, he's got a letter out to you folks, July 12, 2012. I would suggest for 149000 that uh, one of you drive up to Concord tomorrow and a meeting with him. Just my suggestion. And uh, put this thing back on the front burner and get this uh, train back on the railroad track. Uh, CMA has talked about uh, bid estimates on this. They've received uh, 35000 on this project, $45,000 on Exeter Road. Their construction costs on Exeter Road are a couple of million bucks. Uh, their contingencies go what, all the way up to $5 million, 5 .8. I don't have the data in front of me. On this project, um, they're saying it was going to be two fifty. dollars They're 150 grand off. It's jeopardizing $150,000 of free money to the taxpayers of the town of New Hampshire. I think uh, when these types of challenges come in, I think that we need to re-examine our confidence in that mm -hmm. that assistance that um, you place apparently more confidence in than, than others do, uh, because the bids have come in and they're nowhere near what CMA has said they're, they're supposed to come in. This is a, a firm that um, I'm hearing advocacy for to take over the Exeter Road job, and they have built-in contingencies uh, upwards of seven figures. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. And this is just too much wobble. There is uh, no room for that kind of error, and especially for engineering. And we've repaid you one. Uh, we see the state working at the seawall. Um, is, it, is it congested? Yes. But is it that complex? No, it's not. Uh, CMA engineers has contact both bidders to discuss their bids. This is this summer. At the time of this letter, one of the bidders has not returned their phone calls. Didn't say a lot to me. Um, I don't know who's running this, this train, but uh, it doesn't appear that anybody is. I just want to finish up. We'll go back to the board. Um, but I, I think this is uh, um, pandemic. 
you talk about contractors that want funding assured, well, the, the taxpayers want 150 grand assured when it's granted, and you need a good bid price, and we're not getting that. We've paid so far this firm $80,000, and I think based on the product I've seen, and I still don't have, um, and just want to slide back to Exeter Road, have requested the work product to date that the $45,000 uh, the taxpayers paid. Haven't seen that, and we requested that. I know we requested information on that. What is the final work product? So um, someone's got to get to Concord. Someone's got to put this thing back in the burner. I think we have to expand our, our search for uh, engineering support. Mm -hmm. I think we need to go outside of CMA's uh, 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 realm of influence and look at other contractors. And again, it, uh, it, it may be congested, uh, but it's not brain surgery. And uh, I don't think the taxpayer is being served by this type of effort. I've sent you that email. would like all that data. would like the finished work product uh, to date. The town has paid $45,000 on Exeter Road. Nobody's seen it, yet people are advocating bonds upwards of $5 million. So we need to really up this game. Sir. I wanted to ask, is CMA the town engineer? Yes. Well, I know that there's been a lot of questions asked and discussed about CMA um, at the planning board um, at times. So <coughs> I don't, I don't know. I'm just questioning that. And um, so I think the planning board might be able to give some advice. Maybe we should have, you know, some information coming in from there um, because I believe they they have they did. It, you, one person that would be good to find out information about that is Lori Olivier. She uh, investigated, I believe, some of what our relationship with CMA is, if I'm not mistaken. And <clears throat> when I was talking before, I said um, that it, I thought it had something, it was considered, and I said High Street, I meant Exeter Road. And another thing, and maybe you might have the answer to this, Keith. Um, Remember, there was something about um, the different businesses there tying in their sub pumps or something. Does that ring a bell to you? Sort of. Was did that have anything to do with this? It, it could. To extend yeah, the I believe it did. That would be available to them. Yeah, and Fred yeah. had a lot of information about that. But, but I, I, I can I'd like say. To just, just take a second to to, to remind you that. Since I've been here, I have been advocating with every board not to be bidding in uh, engineering services. And, and the town policy is you bid engineering services unless they're part of a state or federal grant. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, it's money that when you bid engineering services, you get what you pay for. Mm -hmm. You have to take the low bid for the most part. And I have developed, I've familiar with working with a system, most towns do, where it's an RFQ process where you put out a request for qualification statement and then you invite engineers to come in to do interviews and then you select the engineering firm based on the, the, um, uh, the actual person, the engineers that are going to be working on the project rather than just the firm. Mm -hmm. Because some firms will do great in one area but not so great in another area. But when you have to go with the low bid, which we had to do on the Exit Road project, now granted, this project was not bid because we, the federal government, it's against the law. Anything that has, whether it's state or federal money, it's against the law to bid engineering services. You, you can't do it. You have to go through an RFQ process. And Church Street Station, we went through the RFQ process, came through, that project went through like that. Because we based the selection not on the low bid. In yeah. fact, we fired the prior engineers that were originally hired by low bid to do the preliminary work on the yeah. Church Street Station. Yeah. And I ended up firing them because of the poor performance. Yeah. Well said. Okay, another go around at this and, and selecting Woolsey and then selecting Woolsey. Great point, because I haven't been happy with the product I'm seeing out of there. We need to, to talk about this or let give Keith some leeway on this engineering stuff. Yeah, I think we need to work with you guys. We need to, you know, come up with the right engineering firm to do it. You know, I think you guys have the expertise in that area. Mm. Uh, 
you know, if we're not getting the product out of it, then, then we can't. But and, and I think I also agree that, that we don't want to lose the money, but mm -hmm. you know, we want to try and maintain that as much <coughs> as possible. Uh, so whatever you guys can come up with mm -hmm. to, to you know, let let's hang on to this grant. Let's hang on to what we got and let's try and work it out and try and make it work mm -hmm. as is. Cause we, we we presented with what we have now. Let's not lose that. Great. Thank you. And, and final comments from the from the table uh, to the uh, assistant town manager, Mr. Sullivan. Yeah, I just think um, to assist them with the, the grant issue, we're seeking that additional extension. I think it'll be helpful to speak with Mrs. Pack here. The board has a consensus, if not a vote, to say we want to continue this project, but because the funding didn't come in as targeted, we're pursuing other options. I think that'll help them when they go up and seek that extension, that the board is, in fact, still serious about moving forward, and we want to find a solution to the project. Agreed. That'll help them significantly. That'll be that, I think, extra information that Mrs. Peck is looking for to be able to bolster that. I'll make that motion. I'll second it. Mm, good Bridal, idea. Waddell, all those in favor? Unanimous, excellent suggestion. Thank you. Thank you. Gentlemen, good night. Appreciate Thank you. It. Roman 5, approval of minutes, 1 September 29, 2014. I will move that we adopt the minutes of September 29. I'll second it. Without correction, amendment, modification, um, all those in favor? Looking, well, I'm looking oh, real quick. Pardon me? I found, but not in these minutes, I think. No, nothing here. Okay. okay. All those in favor? Thank you. I'll move the minutes of October 6th. And modifications, amendments. I have some questions. I just can't hear the minutes. Um, <laughs> the first page I just highlighted about continuing uh, inquiries about why the budget isn't on uh, the website but page two announcement and community calendar in the very first sentence uh, selectman Woolsey stated the road race went well much faster in the past I said much faster than in the fa in the past it it went quicker so amended yeah so we can stick van in there and I think I had one more. Oh, on page 14, um, <laughs> in the middle of the page, it's not the animal patrol budget, it's the animal control budget. Although that was rather funny. So, All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. From the sixth, our manager support, sir. Uh, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Um, Mr. Welch, who he couldn't be here today, is uh, issue early tomorrow morning to begin his six-week recovery time. So you're stuck with me for a little while. I <laughs> um, want to talk about a dealt with on the consent agenda issue at uh, Badcock and Joanne Lane for um, uh, no parking down in that area based on some complaints and issues to address that. Uh, the town conducted its annual auction this weekend. We spoke to that briefly. Mr. Bridal touched on that. A thank you to Pascal and Bill Lally, who acted as the uh, auctioneer for that. Uh, the annual budget books have been released to the budget committee for their use in the scheduled review and the upcoming uh, reviews. And last but certainly not least, he wanted to announce that he has appointed uh, Richard Sawyer to be the next police chief to succeed me upon my retirement. Uh, that'll be effective in my retirement. My last day is the 31st, Halloween. Uh, <laughs> to be in costume that last time, I guess. And then. Uh, uh, Deputy Chief Sawyer, then Chief Sawyer will begin November 1, and there's a plan swearing in here at your meeting on November 3rd at 7 p.m. that evening. Okay. And that is also congratulations. Welcome to Board Selectman Wilson. 836 Rear Lafayette Road. When I was watching the zoning board meeting, I mentioned this to Fred briefly. When I was watching that meeting, I found out something I didn't know. Mr. Diener was there. Did Jay leave? Yes, he did. But he was there to hear what went on as well. Apparently, when Route 1 was rebuilt, it's filled in. 2004, 2005, whatever, in that time frame. Oh, wait a minute. No, that was when Hunter Reesberg was still here. That would be the late 90s, 90-something. 90 that was rebuilt. Apparently, the town and not the town, the state authorized the construction crews to use the 836 Rear Lafayette Road lot 
as a dumping ground for the leftover materials from the construction. I think that is a disgrace. I, I have no idea why anyone was allowed to do that. Any material that was not supposed to, was not used or whatever should have been taken off site and disposed of properly. The residents who were at the zoning board meeting were saying that that little area in the back of the property was had a wildlife pond and the wildlife used to go in there and, and all that stuff and the whole area has been decimated. And it is, um, uh, well, I guess you could call it a wasteland now. How dare the state of New Hampshire allow that on town property? I would like to follow up with that, with DOT or whoever's appropriate, and ask why that was done and why the state can't come in and restore that for the town. Thank you. I was furious when Mr. I heard Solomon's that. Mr. Solomon's made that uh, notation. Uh, further? Uh, None of that's up. I'm really upset. I don't know what they're doing on other construction projects, but that's an insult to this town. Phil. Hmm? Phil. He used it as Phil. Okay, par pardon me. Selectman. Thank you, Brian. No, thank you. Thanks for your for report. The town manager. Nothing. <coughs> Nothing. Okay. It was a good report, too, by the way. <laughs> Fred wrote it. I just wrote it. Oh. He's saying that because it was short and sweet. Okay. okay. We have no scheduled new business. Um, Roman 8, old business. Selectman Wilson. I have noticed, and I'm sure you have as well, as a result of some public comment here, that there has been an exchange of emails uh, between town council and the division of charitable trusts in Concord. Um, and, and if I just may make a, a, a statement, are, are we sure that this isn't violating confidentiality? Well, that's what I want to talk about. Okay. Um, but I want to make sure. That no, well, I, I'm going to be discreet it's, it's in my, my comments. It's between two attorneys, so I want to be, I want to well, make sure um, that we broach that subject generally. Well, let me just, I'm, I'm going to make a generic comment because okay. I've been thinking about this. Um, well, it's, it's too I bad. To I go very, home and think of all these wonderful things. This, like, um, the issue has been the trust funds, which are public monies. The trust funds are handed, handled by an independent elected board of public officials. Um, if there have been questions, and there have been from members of the public related to some areas of uh, administering the trust funds, I consider that public information. The trustees of the trust funds have no more right to hide behind uh, privileges than we have. We can't sit here and claim a privilege in the conduct of our duties. We can't uh, excuse ourselves or absolve ourselves of something if there's public criticism of us as a board. We have to sit here and take it. And it has to be done in public. I'm not saying anybody's criticizing, but I'm saying that it, it appears to me that the emails relate to the administration by a public body of public money. Mm -hmm. And I see no reason why that constitutes confidentiality. I mean, I know attorneys are involved. Well, that's fine. But these are two public entities. Board of Selectmen asking, I guess, their attorney to check with charitable trusts. And the trustees of the trust funds have come in and made presentations to us. But there may be questions, just as people question our decisions. And I don't get it with the confidentiality. I, I, don't, I don't assert any, I just don't know. I'm examining my email here. Right. Uh, I'm on our, my website for the mm -hmm. town and the email. I don't see that, so it's hard copy. Well, it says statement of confidentiality. Okay, so can we just postpone this till next week? Okay, Plus, can but we I thought I'd bring it up because okay. I'm just concerned that the issues are between two public I, bodies. I agree with you. And if we can bring that up at the next okay. meeting, we'll schedule Would that. you put it on the yes, agenda? Yes, duly noted. Yeah, okay. Thank you. That's good. Old business, Roman 8. Um, you're going to love me for this one. But I've been thinking about holidays. Well, you know, you're running a business, I'm working in a business, most of us have 
com commitments and the number of holidays that we have in my line of work are six a year. Well, and now I looked up the Postal Service, because they have holidays, although they're talking about Sunday deliveries, and I counted 11 holidays here, and of course the, um, the vo federal voting would be a 12th in the federal election years, presidential years. So I'm wondering if we want to at least give some thought to seeing whether we want to maintain, it is costly, such a large number of holidays as far as local government is concerned. Well, we're paying for <coughs> holiday time and, and time off and stuff. I just thought I'd bring it up and think about it because there's a range in, in private business and then of course in the in governmental entities. So I thought I would just drop that for a as a thought. Thank you very much. Okay. I know that gets you all excited. And I want to thank Fred for the letters that he did to the Greenlands um, development. And I noticed we have a response. So it is nice to see a uh, neighborhood responding in a civil manner. And hopefully we won't have problems with, uh, with poor people just walking their dogs up the street. Wonderful. That thank was very well done. Thank you, sir. I just question if the holidays, are, isn't that a union issue? It's intertwined with that, yes. Yes. To address that, you need to deal with some of that on collective bargaining issues. Oh, yeah. That's sure. what I yeah. thought, yeah. Slip and break. Nothing. Okay. Slip and break. I want to agree on the, uh, the neighborhood thing, the letters. I, th I think Fred did a good job approaching that in a very civil yeah. manner. Yeah. And I think the, the neighborhood approached back, you know, right. responded in a very civil manner. Right. And I think it was handled nicely. Mm -hmm. And it seems to be resolved. And I think that's, that's a great way to do it. Wonderful. Thank you, sir. Roman 9, closing comments? I think we're commented out. Nothing. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, for the public's information, uh, immediately upon conclusion of this public meeting, uh, the board will enter into non-public session under RSA 91 Alpha 3, Roman 2 Alpha and Charlie, and also RSA 91 Alpha 2 1 Alpha. Thank you for motion to adjourn. I'll make it. Um, time, help. Uh, 2002. 2002. <laughs> Odell. Second. Second. Are you doing it? Bridal. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you very much. <clears throat>